I'm happy to introduce to you uh, Jim Papadopoulos from Jim Davis Thompson. Um, first time I met Jim and I was on the phone, I was having my sabbatical at Cornell and I didn't know what to do. So as a Dutch guy, I started studying bicycle dynamics because they, uh, they happened to do a, a lot in the, in the 70s and 80s. A lot was actually Jim's work. Um, I'm very happy that you're here now and this is what it's all about. Bicycle dynamics is what to do. Okay, well, it's a great, a great, great pleasure to be here with us. So it's the land of the bicycle, obviously. It's not almost unimaginable for someone in the States to see so many bikes being used. And then Jealous is also, Jealous is also some, a name that's been in my mind many times from my dissertation studies of higher studies and so on. It's a great technical university and I'm very pleased to be here. Now I only have one complaint about my visit so far and that is yesterday I was put in a prison to create a, a talk using PowerPoint. <laughs> you know, the tools of my trade from years ago were always with chalk. Chalk and a blackboard and you can say something informal and if it's a mistake well, nobody can see it. It's done. <laughs> and the expectations are not too high. Now we have some, something that's probably looking a little better than it really is. So I uh, ask for patience and I uh, hope you find something interesting in this talk. The title is Bicycle Handling and Self Stability. And this is actually a belt, belt slide. It doesn't need too much comment. Everyone knows what a bicycle is, but nobody really knows how it works. And I don't know how a computer works. Where's the arrow up there? <laughs> this, is a, this is a video which was made at Cornell, I guess, by Steve. Steve, what are you? So, uh, so uh, probably a lot of you have seen this. The main point is that a bicycle can without the control of a rider, be stable, so it's going, you may bump it, it will wobble, and it can come back up. If the design is okay and the speed is okay. Why? Why is it stable? So I want to step back and talk about philosophy for a moment, because people have different definitions of understanding or explanation. Yes? <laughs> yes, sir. Um, for many, if you can simply get government equations, you want to understand. But if you have good government equations, then you can solve those government equations. You have a complicated system, you put in some inputs, you get some outputs. To me, that's not the center of understanding. For me, um, the stick, I'm looking for general conclusions. So if I can put in 100 inputs and see, uh, see some outputs, it doesn't mean I understood it. But if I can give a general conclusion, or if I can give reasons in words for a behavior, then I feel I understand it. And that's the goal I have looking at bicycle. Can I get an understanding with general conclusions and an ability to talk about what's happening? Just me. And my claim is that today no researcher has presented either general algebraic results for bicycles nor uh, verified simple explanations for bicycles. For more philosophy, um, there are many explanations widely uh, widely discussed for why bicycles are stable or seem stable. But really people don't even agree what they mean by the word stability. And many the the explanations are varied and they don't account for designs which are found to be stable. So I claim no one has explained why bicycles stay up by themselves. Nor can anyone list all the different types of of uh, arrangements which can produce stability. 
And the only definite statement that I found in the literature relates to the impossibility, the impossibility of a bicycle without a gyroscope, gyroscopic wheel, or the impossibility of a stable bicycle where uh, certain geometric parameters are zero or negative, the caster, for example. And these, these are things in literature don't seem to be uniformly true. So the technical subject of my talk is the eigenvalue structure for bicycles, for rigid bicycles, the general field of results, and some counterexamples for the uncontrolled bicycle. A bicycle with no rider, or let's say the rider is just a mass. I'll examine the equation of open stability, and I'll be using the recently published linear equations from my yacht and myself. Aaron and Andy, which is in the Proceedings of the Royal Society last year. And uh, the, uh, the point of these equations is that they have been very, very, very carefully validated, and there's even been some experimental validation. So it's the ones the one that. Oh, gosh, sorry. I don't know how to use the mouse here. Now, you may criticize, or you may ask, is this the right thing to do to look at equations for a rigid bicycle and look at the open loop stability? And the criticisms are these. The model we have, it lacks some real world phenomena, like a frictional torque at the contact point. And we know that when a rider is on a bicycle, it makes a very big difference as to what happens. The rider has extra degrees of freedom which makes the system really more complicated. And we don't know the rules that these freedoms obey, and even a person will do, in one case like this, in another case like this, the person is not consistent. So you have a really big mess when you combine a real rider with a bicycle. And I want to point out that in a scale or a continuum, that an automobile or an airplane is rather easy to study because the rider is 10% or 5% of the total system. The bicycle is extremely difficult to study because the bicycle is 10% and the rider is 90%. This rider is degrees of freedom and uh, kind of uncertain rules of behavior. So, so that's criticism. The real bicycle is much simpler. The real rider is more complicated. And lastly, we, nobody has shown, that's what I'm aware of, that if you define a bicycle which is stable, then you actually have something which is nice for a person to ride. It's a real question. Those are criticisms, and they're valid criticisms. And the only response is starting somewhere with something simple that we can make progress with, and maybe, maybe then we start improving in these events. Now, one, one issue is to say what do we mean by stability? And even if you would read, I don't know, technical literature, but more commonly the popular literature, different writers have different ideas. And they say, well, we ride this bike, it's fine, it's stable. But I'm not talking about a person riding a bicycle, steering it. That's not my definition of stability, because a person has skill, and they can balance it, they have a control law. And a person riding with no hands, they're able to do it. I don't call that stable. Because again, if you have more skill, you can keep the bicycle upright when maybe uh, a dead person could not. <laughs> now, in the case where you would imagine a person who's passive and they're on the bicycle, you could say, well, if you let this bicycle go and it stays up after a perturbation, that's stable. But that's too complicated for me. So I don't even consider the, the bicycle with the flexible passive rider. I'm looking at this simple case, a rigid system, in which the, the person, what represents the person is a rigid mass, and the bicycle is rigid. Then our equations apply, then we have a chance to uh, get something definitive. Now there are these widespread ideas about stability, and in a way the, 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 the lazy man 
way to find out how widespread it is. I use Google. Put bicycle and motorcycle.